I officially welcome you to another session of the IELTS class. Today, I'm going to show you how to write the introduction for this diagram. That is the bar chart. So this is a tax one question. And there's a possibility that once you get to the IELTS center, I mean, in the examination, we are likely to get a diagram like this to give a report on. Now, to write the introduction, in my previous lesson, I talked about the various formats when it comes to writing the tax one. And uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to listen to that lesson, I would entreat you to um, just scroll back and then get that lesson to listen to because it's a life changing lesson. I believe that most people are having difficulties with the writing tax one. And uh, you know, you are required to use just 20 minutes to write 150 words. Okay? To write 150 words in the tax one. It might seem difficult, but with much practice, it um, becomes very easy for you. We just get onto the format, just get hold of the format, and then we are good to go. All right, so we are going to use this diagram, this bar chart, to write an introduction. Ideally, the bar chart is one of the diagrams you'll be encountering when it comes to the ion writing that's one. So, to write a perfect introduction, there are certain things we must take into consideration. First of all, we must know the diagram we are going to write the introduction about. So, here we are going to talk about a bar chart. Okay, now that we know what diagram we are going to do with, we have to know how to. I mean, we are going to write our introduction for. You see, usually the introduction is gotten from the question. So the question states that the graph below shows information about the activities that New Zealand and Australian children enjoy doing the most in 2007. So this is where we are going to get our introduction from. And the introduction should uh, probably be about 50 words or less. It should be about 60, uh, 50 words or less. And here, it's your introduction is your first impression to the examiner. It's your first impression to the examiner. What this means is that it's the first thing the examiner will see even before looking at your overview and your body. And here you should make it a point to avoid grammatical errors. And when I say the grammatical errors, what I, I'm trying to mean is that you have to be very mindful of your tenses. You have to be very mindful of your subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement. And uh, you also have to be critical of what we call the collocations as well as the connectors. You look at all this where necessary. So now that you know, you know, I mean, as I said, your introduction should be your first impression and that must give it much attention. Now, once the examiner notices that you have got a lot of grammatical mistakes and wrong tenses, wrong subject of agreement and here and there, what happens here is that it gives an impression to the examiner that you are going to make more mistakes in the body because in the body you are going to write more than I mean, 50 words. And if you are making a lot of mistakes in the introduction, which is carry um, 50 words, then how much more the body you should be having more words. So you have to be very mindful of your introduction. So try to prepare well for the introduction. Make sure that at the end of the day you are writing a mistake free introduction. That is right. Okay, so now that you know what actually has to be done with the introduction, the first thing we must do to start the introduction is to figure out the words you are to or you are capable of paraphrasing. All right, talking about paraphrasing, when I say paraphrasing, what I mean is that you see. You are not required to use the exact words in the question to write your introduction. You are supposed to change about 60% of them. So you are supposed to change about 60% of them. So the act of changing the words is what we call the paraphrasing. So for example, if you look in the question, you can see that there are some words that can be changed, that can be given different, I mean, that can be replaced with different words. For example, um, something like information can be changed to data. So anytime you do this, what you've done is that you have paraphrased. You don't have to worry about that. We'll be looking at that in the shortest possible time. Okay. So what you're going to do is that first of all, identify the ways you can, I mean, you are capable of paraphrasing. And at this point, if you have some vocabulary at your bank, because if you don't know some ways, I can replace um, some of the words in here, then um, you'll be found wanting. you waste a lot of time with the introduction, you know. Okay. So looking at this question or looking at this paragraph, there are some words I think I am confident enough to change. For example, if I look at the question, it states that the graph below shows information about. So I prefer to change, I mean, add something to the graph. 
So let me take notice of that. So if what I do is that I underline. So I'll add something to the graph to make it more lively. Now, I'll also uh, make sure I change the word shoes. I would also be happy to replace the word information. And uh, I can also see the activity. The activities, I would like to add something to it to um, send the vibration protocol. And uh, I think I also have a word for children. So I would change children as well. So basically, I have about six words to change in here. And you know, you should make sure that you are changing about 60% of the words in the question otherwise it is them that verbatim you have used most of the words in the question and that gives an impression to the examiner that you don't have mastery over the english language and that's a loan course or a low man score all right so now that we know some of the words we are capable of vibration let's see what word do i want to replace graph with you see i know the diagram there is a bar chart so in place of this i mean just writing the graph i'll say the bar graph or the bar chart so doing it this way i have paraphrased i've added something new to um, whatever is not stated in the question but you see in actual sense we know the diagram there is the bar chart so that is one way to paraphrase now moving on to the word shows first of all don't forget that we are dealing with a singular verb here you see the bar graph there's only one bar chart or bar graph there so it's a singular now and you know singular nouns should go with singular verbs usually verbs or words with s so the word shush we are going to replace that with a singular verb usually i used to have about three or four ways that I can replace shoes for example in place of shoes i can say represents i can also say demonstrates don't forget your s And uh, I can also say um, illustrates. I can also say presents. So there are more ways to represent shoes or to um, put in place of shoes. You can search for more of them um, at your leisure time. They are very, very important. I mean, your, your ability to have different ways or certain words allows you to um, write faster, it allows you to express yourself quickly and I mean you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking. Now moving on, let's look at some words we can use in place of information. So information. I know of data. I think it is the best fit for the word information. So in place of information in the question, I would prefer to use data. All right, let's move on to look at activities. I'm not going to change the word activities, but I prefer to add something to make it more lively. Now you go back to the diagram and ask yourself how many activities are you talking about here? We have art and crafts, we have books, computer games, DVDs, going to the park, sports. So what this means is that there are six activities. So instead of me really leaving the word just like that, I would prefer to add something like six activities. This is also another way of paraphrasing. Now children. What word is synonymous to children? Well, I don't think most people would prefer to use the word kid, but I think kid is far way below um, the belt. So I usually prefer to use young people. I mean, young people, yeah, or juvenile. I mean, they are this, so you can search for more words that I mean, have the same meaning as children, and you are good to go. Alright, so basically, I've gotten some of the ways I can fix in my introduction to make it more lively 
and to put your exam at least I have ways to turn myself, I mean, I mean to move around when it comes to expressing myself with the English language. Okay, so the next thing after getting the words right is to put them together to make sense. And that is what we are going to do now. Alright, so let's move on. So now we are going to put these words together to make meaning. So let's start. So I'll be demonstrating to you about three different introductions and I was going to you why the, um, it, it, it's happening that way. Yeah, because there's no one way to write an introduction. You may have different ways to express ourselves. All right, so let's start. So the first one here is the bar chart. Demonstrates. So in place of shoes, I'm using the word demonstrates. And you shouldn't forget the test because the bar chart, there's only one bar chart here. And you know, it's a singular noun, so it should correspond with a singular verb. The singular verbs come with S. So the bar chart demonstrates. So the very moment you start writing introduction, it's like you write the bar chart demonstrates. Writing demonstrates with that S indicates that there's a grammatical error here. And, and at this point, the examiner notices that. So you have to be very careful with the subject verb agreement. If you have a problem with that, just make sure you, I mean, just familiarize yourself with that before um, you start the whole thing. So the bar chart demonstrates data. So remember, in place of information, you are putting data regarding six activities. That New Zealand and uh, Australian children in 2007 had much interest in full stop you can simply add, usually people prefer to add the um, measurements. And when I say the measurements, what I mean is that uh, the percentages, as to whether the figures are in percentages, fractions, numbers, but one thing I did was I just resorted to um, just forgetting about that one. But I should prefer you can add that one too. You can see units are in percentages. But it's not that compulsory. Full stop. So now let's look at the second introduction. The bar graph. Remember the first one was bar chart. Now we are changing it to bar graph. The bar graph illustrates. Don't forget your S. Data about six activities. Mostly enjoyed. by the young in place of children guys and young people the young people of australia and uh, new zealand in 2007 so that is it so at this point if you prefer to add the units you just go ahead units are measured in percentage so units are in percentages first of all let's get a third introduction the bar graph compares information regarding sex activities children of Australia so instead of Australian children as it has been used in the question I prefer to turn it down that way wrong children of Australia and New Zealand
in 2007 expressed much interest in units are uh, in percentages full stop so basically you've got three different introductions and they have been turned around in different ways so the first one here is the bar chart demonstrates data regarding sex activities that new zealand and australian children in 2007 had much interest in units are measured in percentages so you could see that looking at the question we had the graph in place of that we said the bar chart the bar chart now you see the graph below shows we change the shoes to demonstrate in the first introduction and the data is represented here as information and you can see that in the question they stated activities but they never, they never added the number of activities so we have to do that in the introduction says activities is also a way of paraphrasing and then um we kept the new zealand and australian children the same way aside as we stated in the question that is it, it doesn't call for any concern because we changed about 60 percent of the wage in the question and uh enjoyed doing i also said had much interesting so this is another way of paraphrasing now moving on to the second introduction instead of just graph we said the bar graph and we represented the shoes with illustrates information with data and we also mentioned the six activities here mostly enjoyed so in the question you can see that i said the truth new zealand and australian children enjoy doing here we turn the sentence the other way around mostly enjoyed by young people of australia and the young people here represented as children so you can see that there are different ways and different variations of the introduction just how to go through the procedure so first of all know the type of graph or diagram there if it's a bar chart if it's a line graph if it's whatever make sure that you specify that in the introduction it's one way of paraphrasing now once that is done you also have to ask yourself how many activities or how many things are you talking about you have to incorporate that in the introduction and thirdly you have to try and then underline those ways that you think you have ways to replace they are very important and bear in mind that you are supposed to um paraphrase 60 percent of whatever ways you have in the question you must take note of that so what i advise is that just try to find out some of these ways that can i mean for example we can go to dictionary and search for where that's not most to choose where that's not most information write them down because it allows you to write faster you don't have to think about a way that you want to paraphrase or replace so we just work out this exercise and I believe that the writing that's going to be very easy for you. So in a lot of ways to write the introduction, I mean it's not very difficult. It's about getting some ways at the band and then just listening them in uh, and you are good to go. So basically this is how to write the introduction for the tax one. This is for a bar chart. I believe that I will uh, make another video on the other aspect as well. But for now, I would want us to review. I believe some people have written this particular um diagram and they say on this particular diagram and they send them to me for review i prefer to do that in the group instead so we'll be looking at since we are done with the introduction we'll be looking at we comparing what they did to what i've said now and we'll be i'll be probably pointing out the mistakes here and then i believe that anyone who had written but have not sent it to me for review will also have a fair idea of how to go about it and will be able to i mean discover the mistakes you made in there so that's very very important so at this point i'll be posting one particular um essay someone sent to me i'm not mentioning the person's name i believe the person is part of the group and it's a way of actually trying to let him or her understand um, the nitty-gritties of the introduction. Okay, so let's look at that.